Hello, church. It's good to be back with you today, and we're in the uh, last phases of our study of Philippians. Uh, after today's teaching, we'll have two more, and then we'll move on to another book, and we're talking about doing the book of James, uh, the uh, Just Do It book, and so we hope that's a blessing to you to know that that's coming on the horizon. But let's get to the passage that God has for us today. It comes from Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse 10. It says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. So the first question I have for us today is, are you content? Do you even know what contentment is? I think we spend a lot of our time whining and complaining about first world problems. Uh, things that really do not matter in the overall scope of salvation and eternity and all those godly things. We spend a lot of time just complaining. Does it reflect a lack of contentment on our part? You know, I think we're driven so much by happiness. We chase after moments of happiness. Isn't that all a vacation is? Dee Dee and I were blessed to be away a couple of weeks ago uh, just to go do the things we enjoy. And it was a blast and it brought us a great deal of happiness. But it wasn't a foundation for our contentment. Our contentment was actually found in being with each other, being together. You see, I think the source of most of our contentment should be relational, which is what Jesus calls us to in himself. So here's what I want us to take away as Paul begins to teach. He uses a phrase, he says, he has learned to be content. In other words, this is not a gift. Contentment is not something I'm gifted with. Contentment is something I choose. It's a learned behavior over time to experience all circumstances and situations, as Paul says, through a lens of Christ, through Christ who is with me. It is not a gift. It's not some people are content and others are not. We all have the potential and possibility of being content. The question is, do we choose contentment? I think there are two kinds of kingdoms. We've been preaching on this. There's the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of this world. And the kingdom of heaven is all about abundance. When Jesus says, I have come so that you may have life and have it abundantly. And then in the kingdom of the world is all about scarcity. It's about holding on. It's about hoarding. It's about not sharing. It's about not living generously. You see, contentment is found in the kingdom of heaven where we have abundance, not in material possessions, but a fullness of Christ, a fullness of love in us. The kingdom of the world is based on scarcity. We're always fearful of what we're going to lose. We're in the kingdom of heaven. We're always confident in what we will give away, right? So right at the very end, Paul makes the passage. He says, how is all this possible? How is my contentment possible? He says this, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Now, we know this is, this is the kind of thing that shows up on Pinterest. It's on coffee mugs. Everybody hijacks a statement and makes it about something that pro athletes can say easily. And I can do all things through he who gives me strength. The problem is, is we tend to focus on, I can do all things, not who it is through. And so here's what happens. It becomes, I think verse 13 is, I wrote this down. It's the ultimate, I think I can, little engine who could, biblical secret sauce verse of all verses in history. It's a little bit like a self-help book. When in reality, the key phrase in this passage is that contentment is not a moment, that contentment is a commitment. It's a commitment to do life and all things and circumstances through one person, Jesus Christ. It's how Paul was able to say, to live as Christ, to die is gain. This is what contentment means. It means that nothing can disturb me. Nothing can bring me down. And yet we live in a world where the constant barrage of those things trying to bring us down are endless and we succumb to them every day. I succumb to them. You succumb to them. What Paul is saying to us is you don't have to. I don't have to. 
we can learn to be content in all things through him who gives us strength. So contentment's not a gift, church. It's a choice. And so in any given day, if you find an absence of contentment, you will find an absence of a commitment to Christ. You will just find it missing because of who Christ is in our lives. We are able to have an abundance of life which is contentment for all things. Gosh, church, I hope this was helpful. It's powerful here at the end. And Paul is reminding us of our place inside the kingdom of heaven and what that looks like as we radiate his love everywhere we go. I love you, church. Can't wait to be with you again next week. And looking forward to the coming lesson in James. Take care. 